Hello, and a very good morning from Leeds, which is of course nestled right in the heart of West Yorkshire. Today, we'll be taking a speedy two hour connection down to London with LNER. Now, it's been a while since I've taken a look at one of their newer Azuma trains, so I'll be setting that right today, and I've even booked a first class ticket for our trip down to the capital. But first, let's check out the station. Well, the lack of any construction work here at Leeds Station really didn't last all that long, did it? Not quite sure what they're doing here, so if you know, be sure to leave a comment. Anyways, the departure boards and the gate line can be found just dead ahead from the main entrance. The service we'll be taking today is the 12.15 to London King's Cross, so we've still got a little bit of time until we need to head through to the platform. Heading towards the North Concourse, you'll find plenty of ticket buying facilities, including both self-service ticket machines and staff ticket counters. Then we find the beautiful, almost understated Art Deco Concourse itself. This part of the station dates from the 1930s, and it's also down here that you'll find a few shops and eateries. When I filmed this video, the Jurassic Trail was on here in Leeds, so there were dinosaurs all over the city, including this one here at the station, which I thought was kind of cool. Anyway, being first class ticket holders, we of course get access to LNER's first class lounge that they have here in Leeds. The lounge, while a nice place to sit and wait, doesn't really have that much to offer. Heck, even the coffee machine was out of order when we visited, and the snacks are just downright underwhelming. Anyway, soon enough, it's time to head through to the platform for boarding. We'll be departing from Platform 6 today. While most of LNER's Leeds to London services start or terminate here, our train will actually be coming from nearby Harrogate today. Before long, our train is pulling into the platform on time. Being a service that originated in Harrogate, the service down to London is operated by the bi-mode version of the Azuma, the Class 800, as opposed to the electric-only Class 801 variant. Obviously, with the full length of our journey being under wires today, we won't be spending any time on diesel mode. Anyway, this Class 800 is formed of nine coaches, six and a half of which offer standard or second-class seating with the other two and a half housing first class. Across the two classes of travel, these trains are able to accommodate up to 611 seated passengers. That's nearly 100 passengers more than your typical Airbus A380. These Azuma sets have a top speed of 125 miles an hour, although this could be increased to 140 miles an hour in the future, with very minor modifications. Of course, this would be reliant on some quite significant and expensive upgrades to the rail network on the East Coast mainline as well. Anyway, I feel as though I've now waffled on enough, so let's get on board. I'll be in Coach L, seat 26 today. As is pretty much universal on intercity trains in the UK, first class is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration, consisting of a good mix of both table and airline style seats. London Kings Cross. In contrast to the airline style seats, legroom is actually quite a bit tighter in the bays of 2 and 4. Each and every seat, including the solo ones, features a nice big fixed table, as well as both USB and the standard type G sockets that are found here in the UK. These seats actually offer a pretty impressive amount of recline which is always good. Now the comfort of these seats is an often heavily criticised point. But personally, I think they're fine, and I'd even go as far as saying they're actually quite good. And lastly, you'll also find a coat hook, the electronic seat reservations, and a window blind. Over, 
overall, still pretty impressed with the hard product on offer here. Anyway, before we set off, we should probably take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us heading south, making stops in Wakefield, Doncaster, Grantham and Stevenage, before finally arriving into London King's Cross for a total distance travelled of 186 miles or 299 kilometres. Scheduled travel time is 2 hours and 16 minutes. And we eventually depart Leeds around a minute late at 12.16. <coughs> Shortly after passing Elland Road Football Stadium, the meal service promptly starts with a round of drinks, as well as the host taking orders for food. I can never really seem to see past the Hop On Board Ale, which is an LNER exclusive and is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Shortly thereafter, we arrive at our first calling point of Wakefield Westgate. Around a quarter of an hour after Wakefield, we arrive at our next stop of Doncaster. Doncaster is of course a town steeped in railway history, with the nearby Doncaster Works, which was established in 1853, still operating to this day. Soon after Doncaster, our food arrived. I went for the shepherdess chicken, which was fantastic. This was accompanied by crisps and a brownie to finish. If you're wondering, it was LNER's dish menu being offered on this service which is sort of the middle of their three first-class meal offerings. A link to all of their menus can be found in the description below. Once we're finished eating, the meal service is followed up by a tea and coffee service. Another common complaint with these trains is that a lot of people find the ride quality to be pretty poor. However, for the most part I disagree with this, as I found that they're usually pretty good, even when hurtling along at 125 miles an hour. Up next today is Grantham, birthplace of Britain's first female Prime Minister and international supervillain Margaret Thatcher. She was also the longest serving Prime Minister of the 20th century, having held the role for over 11 years. Shortly after Grantham, we passed the point where Mallard achieved the world speed record for a steam train in 1938, achieving 126 miles an hour, a record which still stands to this day. Right, time for a wonder. I must say I really like the colour palette here in first class, it's very classy in my opinion. Towards the north end of the train we find standard class, which as expected is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. In some of the vestibules you'll find these enclosed bicycle spaces. 
These can be used free of charge, however, the spaces do need to be reserved. Luggage storage can be found in the form of these stacks at the ends of the coaches, as well as rather spacious overhead racks above the seats. In Coach G you'll find the cafe bar, where standard class passengers can purchase drinks and snacks. It's also possible to order stuff on your phone and have it delivered directly to your seat. I guess this is the modern day version of the good old mobile trolley service. I will say that my main two complaints regarding these Azuma sets are that the lighting is far too bright, and a lot of the seats in both classes of travel have very poor window alignment, with the ones at the far ends of the coaches often even having no window at all. Coach C is where you'll usually find some unreserved seating if you need it, while the quiet coach can be found in Coach H. Wheelchair spaces can be found at the very front and rear of the train, for first and standard class respectively. Please lock the door. As for the toilets, yeah, no complaints here. Everything was clean, well stocked and in good working order. Lastly, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, although it wasn't all that great on this service, and I couldn't even get my speed test to work. Anyway, we're now at our next and final intermediate stop of Stevenage. <coughs> Shortly thereafter, we find ourselves in the outskirts of London, and fast closing in on King's Cross Station. Well, this has been a pretty decent journey down from Leeds, hasn't it? Good food, comfy seats and a smooth ride make for a great experience. As for the tickets, well, at £51.15, including railcar discount of a third, it's not exactly the cheapest, and this ticket doesn't even offer any sort of flexibility. I had to travel on the 1215 service. That said though, the cost is perhaps reflected in the level of service offered. And not to mention the fact that it's not uncommon for this fare to still be available just mere hours prior to departure, as it was on the day I travelled. So, a good experience overall, and perhaps one of Britain's best first class offerings. But what are your thoughts on LNER's first class and their Azuma trains? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Past the Emirates Stadium and through the Gasworks Tunnels we go, which lead us to our final destination of London King's Cross, where we've arrived on time at 14.31. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like, it's certainly greatly appreciated. If you're new to the channel, then why not subscribe and enable notifications, as I publish new trip reports fairly regularly. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.